healers in the house today. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke, please. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We come before the throne of grace to find help and mercy in a time of need. And we praise you and thank you that healing through the stripes of Jesus belong to us. Health belongs to us. Divine health belongs to us. And we give you praise and we thank you for that. We honor you today in the name that's above every name that's named, the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Now, in the uh, 23rd chapter of the book of Luke, the whole multitude of them alone led him unto Pilate and they began to accuse him saying, we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar saying that he himself Christ a king. And Pilate asked him saying, are you a king of the king of the Jews? He answered him and said, you said it. Then Pilate to the chief priest to the temple, I find no fault in this man. And they were more fierce saying, he stirs up the people teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Pilate heard the uh, Galilee. He asked whether the man was Galilee. And as soon as he knew that it belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod and himself was at Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, desirous to, uh, to see of him a long season because he'd heard many things of him. He hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him many words and he answered him nothing. The chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Herod with his men of war set him at naught <clears throat> and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent, sent him to Pilate. The same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together for they were enmity between themselves. Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people said, you have brought this man unto me as one that perverts the people. I have examined him and found no fault in this man touching these things which you accuse him. No, nor yet Herod. Now you read on down verse 17 in necessity he must release unto them one at the feast. And they cried out one saying, away with this man and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore willing to release Jesus spoke again unto them. They cried saying, crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, why? What evil has he done? I've found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified and the voices of them and the chief priests prevailed. Now you remember one of the other accounts that said, his blood be on our heads. And he released unto them him that had sedition and murder and was cast into prison whom they desired to be delivered Jesus to their will. As they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian coming out of the country and on him, they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. There followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. Now look at this. Right in the middle of all this, Jesus turning unto them said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. 
Then shall they begin to say in the mountains, fall on us and the hills cover us. For if they do those things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? Right in the midst of all that, he's been beat nearly to death. The cat of nine tails, little pieces of metal and bone into that whip, cutting his back to the bone, bleeding from his head, bleeding. His blood is being shed. And all of a sudden he turns around in that and says, don't cry for me. He stopped and ministered to people. He's still doing it. He's just ministering to people all the way to the cross. Now, had he not said what he said on that cross, forgive them. They know not what they do. Then his blood would have been on their heads, but that was not his purpose. His purpose was to get the Garden of Eden back, get that blessing back on the people that God the Creator did in the first place. Amen. That was his desire to fulfill the works and the word of the Lord. Now, while we're right here, let's turn back to the 10th chapter of the book of Luke. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. Therefore, he said, the harvest is great, but the laborers, if you pray ye the Lord of the harvest, therefore, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor shoes and salute no man by the way. Into whatsoever house you enter, say, peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Whatsoever city you, you enter and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you and heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But unto whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your way, go out into the street and say, even the very dust of this city that cleaves on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is, has come nigh unto you. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for the mighty works done in thee in Tyre and Sidon be done in you. It would be great while ago repented sitting in sackcloth and ashes. It shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than you. And you, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth and heareth me, he that despises you despises me. He that despises me despises him that sent me. And the 70 returned saying with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Well, sir, he was there. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And I give you unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babies. Even so, Father, for it so seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knows who the Son is but the Father and who the Father is but the Son, but unto whom the Son will reveal him. And he's revealed him to us. Amen. Jesus 
set his entire staff against sickness and disease. It's the same thing in the, in the 10th chapter of Matthew, just totally against it. He's the forgiver. Now, I want you to look. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you about little Willie Phelps. Little Willie Phelps, uh, his, his legs didn't work right. And uh, he, he was waiting for Brother Roberts and he, he came out of the meeting and he said, are you Oral Roberts? He said, yes, I am. He said, I'm supposed to be healed today. And he said, well, son, the anointing has left me and I'm, I, I'm ex totally exhausted. He said, I don't know about that. All I know is I'm supposed to be healed today. And he said, well, I'll lay hands on you. You'll have to do, do the believing. Of course, his mother was there. And he laid hands on little Willie Phelps. He was instantly healed. Instantly. That moment, his mother put him down and he walked off healed and well. I'm supposed to be healed today. Well, you're supposed to be healed today. Now, let's go to Exodus chapter 15. And Exodus 15, 26. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, do that which is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptian, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now listen what the requirements were. Diligently, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Do that which is right in his sight. Give ear to his commandments. Keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am. Well, he's also the God that changes not. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. And you remember in the book of Acts, when the angel said, you men of Galilee, why look you so steadfastly of this same Jesus will come again. This same, he's the same today. He is the healer today as much as he ever was because he never changes. And God's will is for his people to live in divine health. Glory to God. But there are conditions involved in it. Proverbs chapter four. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a healer in the house today and his name is Jesus. Proverbs four, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Now I know how it is in Texas and I expect it's about the same here. We don't attend to something, we tend to it. <laughs> I got to tend to this. Attend to my words. What does that mean? Put it first. Put it absolutely first place in your life. Put it in a place where it's the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night. Praise God. This is my receiving day. Every day there are things that, that the Lord has taught me over the years and and it taught me a great deal through Gloria, praise, because she's smarter than I am. So, you know, that's wonderful. When you marry your best friend, she's a whole lot smarter than you. It makes me look good. <laughs> Amen. But this is my receiving day every day. 
And I'm always one day closer to the resurrection. I'm always one day closer then to my birthday. I'm always one day closer to Christmas. Oh, one day closer to Gloria's birthday in that order. And one day closer to our anniversary. I never forget our anniversary. I couldn't forget it if I tried. Glory to God. And uh, this coming April the 13th, it'll be 62 years. Yes. Glory to God. And we've been in the ministry 56 of it. Hey, glory to God. And it was her unconditional love that softened me into that place where I was, I was ready, praise God, to receive. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart for their life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now I have a little number there that says medicine. The word is medicine. That's per the prescription right there. But you can't have the prescription just sitting at your, on your, you know, your bathroom sink. It doesn't work. You call the doctor and say, this, this prescription doesn't work. Well, did you take it three times a day? No, but I'm sitting here looking at it right now. <laughs> well, your Bible is the same way. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So now we're taking our medicine this morning because everything we do and everything we say this morning will be based on these blood covenant statements. So now let's look over here in the book of Matthew in, in uh, 22, 34, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Now listen, then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, I just give you my testimony. This is what happens at the Copeland House. We have our evening meal rather early and, uh, and it's for a reason so that we're done by about six. So we, ha we truly have a fast because we don't get up and eat midnight snacks and things like that. So the next thing, she has her bath and I take my shower. <laughs> and then we go to bed and if I've been gone a while, I catch up on the 700 Club and watch that. And I watch Gordon, I pray for him when he comes on. There's my brother, Lord. And we agree with Terry Mewson as she gives invitations. And as they pray for people of glory and I sit there, we set ourselves in agreement. That's, a, that's our general process. Then, this, then, then we go to, we turn everything off. And uh, I, I, well, I say good night, my love. And she says good night to me. And sometimes she'll say, it, isn't it amazing that we've been together this long? And it was a miracle how we got together in the first place. <laughs> and we talk about something like that. Then I always sleep on my left side. I turn over and I go through that right there. Every night of the world. I did it last night in my hotel room. I love the Lord my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind and all my strength. And I love my neighbor as myself, fulfilling all the law and the prophets. 
and, and that it hangs. It's, love is the curtain rod upon which, pff, glory to God, all fulfilling all the law and the prophets. And now let's go to the 13th chapter of John. And then I quote this one. By that time, I'm just about asleep. John chapter 13. And we go over here to the uh, 34th verse. Now this is in that last Passover meal. This is the one his disciples still didn't know what was about to take place. But when you read it, the first thing he did was to get Judas out of that room. And they thought he sent him to give to the poor. You really have to have a high reputation for giving to the poor. So obviously that had happened before. He's love in action. And Judas was the treasurer. He had the bag. So they thought that's where he went. No, he had to get that devil out of the room. And that's when he began to share the depth of what he was saying. And I want you to look at this now. Verse 31, therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified. God's glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you, you shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, where I go, you cannot come now. I say this to you, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. That's, that's the last thing before I turn over and go to sleep every night, day in, day out, every day, all over the world, that's become the routine that the Lord put in my heart. And that's one of the reasons I live in divine health. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. And so am I. Give him a shout, glory to God. If you couldn't run, run. If you couldn't bend over, bend over. If you couldn't see, look out of those eyes. Hallelujah. All the pain in my back is gone. All the pain in my knees gone. My ears, I can hear better. And my sinuses is healed. I am healed of knee pain. Thank you, Jesus. This is amazing. I think he's running around his house right now. Uh, (laughs) Betty put it here in the chat. Healed now of vestibular vertigo. She was uh, having some considerable pain in her left knee, and she said she was having problems sleeping at night with it. But when you spoke out knee, uh, her knee is now healed. She doesn't have any more pain. In Praise that God. Praise God. And she said, when you said a little while ago for somebody to move something, she said she has total range of motion Ooh, without pain. Look at you. Praise God. <laughs> and you said to do things that you can do. I started to rotate and lift my arm straight up, and I couldn't rotate it at all. Now I can rotate it, and it's no pain. This person here says, I rejoice over my healing. Uh, knee pain is completely gone had back pain back here on my waist. It's gone. Right. <laughs> my thumb here that I thought was broken or whatever, it don't hurt no more. Healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. But I am so grateful that he healed me that I could use this brain of mine <laughs> for his kingdom work. Even 
Even in a world where sickness surrounds us, every steadfast believer can know with confidence that they can live protected from whatever is out there and live in vibrant health. In the audio series, God Wants You Well, Gloria Copeland takes you through the scriptures, illuminating the essence of God's desire to heal and restore you to divine health. This series outlines a truth for every believer. Healing is not a distant dream. On the cross, Jesus carried the weight of your pain and discomfort, securing your healing with profound sacrifice. Picture this, God envisions you thriving in your spirit, mind, and body, resulting in you flourishing at home, excelling professionally, channeling creativity, nurturing relationships, and pursuing dreams with newfound vigor. Whether you've studied the Bible's healing promises for years or are just beginning, this message will strengthen your faith. Brace yourself for a transformation. See your faith fortified and sharpened. Now is the moment to resolve any doubts. God wants you well. In Gloria Copeland's powerful series, God Wants You Well, she explores the Word of God concerning your healing. God's nature is to heal you so you can live in divine health. Receive your free CD series when you visit our website, kcm.org slash TV special, or when you call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. God wants you well. He loved you so much that he sent Jesus to free you from sin and deliver you from all sickness and disease. Healing is still God's will for you today. God is a good father and he wants all his children to enjoy a life filled with divine health. If you want to learn more on how to receive the healing God has provided for you, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift they want to send you called God Wants You Well. Sickness and disease was never God's plan for man. In this teaching, Gloria Copeland will show you the scriptures that prove God wants you to live healed and whole. Build your faith in the absolute truth that God wants you well and receive divine health that God has planned for you. This audio teaching is available in both CD and digital formats. To request your free copy of God Wants You Well, go to kcm.org. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow. This is Brother Larry reminding you that God loves you, we sure love you, and Jesus is Lord. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free.